Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 127, we're going to take a first look at dipole speakers, also known as open baffles, or just OBs for short. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. The number one inquiry we get on TubeLab is, Jim, when are you going to show us your open baffle speakers? Huh? <laughs> well, today we'll make a start on talking about OBs. First of all, an open baffle speaker is a dipole speaker. That is, the speakers have both a forward pole and a rear pole. That's possible because there's nothing behind the speaker. No box, no enclosure, no nothing. So when the speaker goes positive and the cone moves forward, so there's your positive, right? So now the cone's moving forward. And when the, speaker, when the signal goes negative, the cone was going to go backwards. And I'm going to actually show you a speaker in a few minutes and we'll take a look at how that works. So when, of course, the cone is in the forward motion, the sound is coming out of the front. And when it's in the rear motion, the sound's coming out of the back, right? Okay, everybody knew that. And if you didn't, it's not hard to figure out. Now, that's the secret to the sound of the OBs, that rear reflection. It creates a room-filling second and, and third, fourth, fifth, sixth harmonic, but generally the second is the dominant after the main signal. And that's much like how a concert hall would work, bouncing around all that sound. If you think about it, a instrument on stage isn't just aimed straight at the audience, is it? It's bouncing the sound all over the place. Now, it's not a free ride. Nothing in high-end audio is. Those reflections can bounce back at the wrong moment in time and space to cancel out the forward reflections. This is much more common with higher frequencies because they move so much faster. The bass and upper bass frequencies, they're really slow. So they don't care. <laughs> Basically, they, they just, it, they don't catch up to each other easily and they rarely are going to cancel each other out. Now there's going to be all kinds of room interactions and um, some of them are going to be beneficial. Some won't matter and some will be negative. And, um, and we'll actually going to do in a future episode, we're going to actually go and take a look at our open baffles, my design number 12, believe it or not. And uh, we were even thinking of recording them today, weren't we, Charles? Yeah, well, um, we we're not quite ready for it yet because of the move, but in the future, you're going to well, be able to see our new listening room. And But what happened in the move? <laughs> we lost something very important. That's what happened. We, yeah, we lost our high-res recording device in its special carrying case. And I'm pretty sure one of us put it somewhere very, very safe. So that we wouldn't lose it. And of course, <laughs> we've this lost is it. What happens. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I don't know. Anyways, uh, what are we going to do? What will be the punishment? Whoever is the guilty party will have to do the cleaning tomorrow? Probably. I don't know. I don't think that's fair. I think we both clean the house. Anyways, okay. So now. The single most important thing with any speaker design is to use the appropriate high quality driver components. Now, with OB, OB designs, that is even more important because the drivers generally need different specifications to speakers designed to be mounted inside a box. The two biggies are X-Max, that's just spelled X and then M-A-X, it's just an abbreviation. This is the excursion capabilities of the cone, or to put it more simply, how far in and how far out the cone can go. This becomes important with OBs because there's no zero back pressure. So the cone is essentially floating in free air. And the other important parameter is the dampening ability of the speaker's suspension. This is referred to as Q or QTS. 
and it's not hard to see why dampening would be important with no back pressure. The speaker cone, again, is basically floating in free air. Now, let's take a quick look at what is actually my mid-range driver. This is, uh, this is a little cartoon of actually what my open baffle design number 12 looks like. And this, this is the tweeter, this is mid-range, and of course, this is the woofer. This is a 14 inch monster and I'm going to show it to you and we're going to listen to it in a future episode. I, and it's a paper cone and this is paper cone and let's just take a look. Now I'm going to, let's see if I can back out a little bit so you can see it properly. Wrong way, Jim. <laughs> there we go. So this is actually a salvage driver and the first thing I did when I started noodling around and designing open baffles is I mounted these to a simple panel, free air, and I listened to them as they would be. So they were open in the back, they were open in the front, and I just wanted to hear the tonality of the speaker and the definition. And I had, I had, and I still have quite a few, um, various drivers from different projects and speakers and you know junk lying around basically and so at the time I had a huge number and I had some very high quality stuff I had some very high efficiency drivers that were well known um, that were you know um, OB speaker designers were working with and nothing absolutely nothing appealed to me. They were all dark sounding, they sounded muddy, cloudy, blah. And then I put these in and I didn't even think I would like these. These are paper coned. They have a fabric suspension. That's this thing around here. And they have fairly good excursion. This is excursion, right? I'm pushing it down and it's springing back. That spring back, that's predominantly your dampening, right? That's what's... Now, it's not just in here, down in this area here. Can you see the spider network down here? This thing down in here, that's a big part of dampening. And of course, this is a magnet structure and a motor, right? It's, it's, um, it's, it's pushing and pulling. So it's an electromagnet? Anyways, yeah, it's yeah. electromagnet. It's electromagnet, um, and um, so all those factors, of course, and the air that the the cone is pushing against, um, all those factors will affect dampening. But what I discovered with this speaker is I love the tone of paper cones. I absolutely adore it. Now this looks like it's very, very substantial, right? You would think, wow. That looks thick and clunky. <laughs> almost looks quilted. <laughs> it almost looks quilted. But I had a driver. I, I, I bought a number of these. And um, I had a driver that had a bit of a stain, a water stain here, or some kind of a dirt stain. And I thought, I'm just going to clean that up with a little tiny dab of soapy water. And the cone went translucent. And it, it was like it had no no mass whatsoever the minute I put some water on it. And I realized that this is all an illusion. This has very little mass. And that, I think, is the secret to the tonality of paper cones. Um, I also adore paper cones in my, in my, uh, in my lower um, drivers for the bass frequencies. And the speakers that we will show you Hopefully next week, unless something more interesting comes along. Because sometimes something more interesting does come along. But probably next week. And we're going to try to listen to them as well if we find our recorder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we already searched everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but almost everywhere. Anyways, um, so we'll actually see these mounted in the baffle. I'll talk a little bit more about how I came to my particular design. You may not be able to duplicate it per se, but it will at least give you some ideas if you want to noodle around in your with designing your own OBs. And, you know, and that's all I got to say, really. Now, what was, what in the heck is happening over at Melatone Kits, Charles? Nothing. 
<laughs> Absolutely nothing. We have been busy moving all week. We were busy moving last week. And we're going to be busy moving next week. Next week. But we're slowly getting, I mean, our labs, my lab is almost completely in place, isn't it's it? It's getting there, yeah. And mine is, mine is sort of in the beginning stages at the moment, but yeah. it's coming along. I think next week your lab will be established. But I'm at the point where I could, I could start building an app i think almost <laughs> yeah well i mean we're and we're filling orders which is good so we're moved over for that well we kept up with the orders that and it's march is a busy march and april are two of the busiest months of the year so we kept up with the orders that was a priority i mean even on a on one of the bigger moving days we shipped in the morning before we even started dreaming of uh, ever thought of going out and moving anything right yeah well we want to try and get stuff out of the door as quickly as we can uh we don't like anything to build up and yep. we want to make sure we get those tubes in your hands as quickly as we can yeah it's always been a priority of mine to ship quickly so that's that we're fine for that and you've got something interesting that you want to show off you found a whole bunch of 60 g didn't you yeah so these are a very high demand tube and I thought it would be fun to show you how these tubes often come into us so let me get these arranged out here so you haven't cleaned these you haven't done, I haven't cleaned them you didn't straighten any pins this is just how you found them right just how I found them they haven't even been tested yet at least not by us and what all these tubes are of course they're the six DJ eights so let me get that on camera here for you now I zoomed out. Maybe you want to zoom in. Oh uh, yeah, let's bring it back in here a little bit. Oh, I, I went the door. other way too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so these are all Philips made 6DJ8s. We've got two varieties here, and those varieties are just the SQ version, which have these gold-plated pins, and these are ones that were selected off of the line because they were low noise and testing very well. So we think that they were probably plated afterwards. And then we have the standard ones, which just have normal pins. And these pins haven't, oh, let me get that in focus. These pins haven't been cleaned at all. You can see how they come into us. They're very, very oxidized, I think is the right word. They're often needing to be straightened. And we clean up all of these before we even start testing on them. So this is an example of a used no, Google Boy. Yeah, and that's probably one of the four more famous of the logos that uh, Philips used, but Philips used all kinds of logos. All kinds. Let's and see if we can name some of them. And you can see here too, this is oftentimes we'll get other people's testing numbers and they'll mark them right on the tube. <laughs> so that's always fun to clean off. So there's a mini watt. That's, that's the logo I think they mostly used in Europe. Yep. So that's their standard European um, branding. And then we've got the SQ version, which of course is Special quality. Special quality, although this is technically an SQ tube as well. You can tell by the gold pins. Then we've got a Mullard over here, and of course Philips own Mullard. And in some cases, they were rebranding Mullard made tubes over to Philips, or Mullard was branding Philips made tubes over to Mullard. So this is an example of that right here. And then there were other subsidiaries that would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And... And then for no reason at all, they would do something really weird and welcome to our world trying to figure out yep, that's which why you, tube is which. That's why you always have to look at the build of the tube and not the naming on them because you never know. And we're always running into stuff that stumps us and requires some research. You even get, in some cases, branding like this. So here's a new old stock example by RCA. And of course, it's branded RCA. And this is another SQ tube. We've got those beautiful gold pins on there and finding these Philips made 6DJ8s new old stock like this is incredibly rare. Yeah, it's getting harder and harder, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But that's a beautiful tube right there. And if you take a look here, uh, oh, they're kind of blurry, unfortunately, but th these are the Philips codes. Oh, let me get that better on camera. These are the Philips codes right here. These would tell us when it was made and exactly which factory it was made in. Yeah, and in most cases, the Philips small signal tubes were made in Heerlen plant, right? So Heerlen Holland. That's, exactly, and this and that, one right here is marked Holland. And that's all that's left on the tube. But if the factory code is visible, it's normally that backwards right angle triangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're trying to figure out what that's called. It's uh, got a specific name, an engineering name, I think, and we were looking for it. I've I've come across it before, but I've got a memory like a sieve, so <laughs> it, I've lost that 
that memory, so I don't know what it is. But these are all basically the same tube, Basically right? the same tube. And this is how we get most of our tubes in. They come in in this kind of quality, this kind of condition. And we're going to lose some of these in testing. They haven't been tested yet. Some will have mismatched sections. They'll be testing low. They'll be noisy. So we've got to go through all of these and get them into the store. But they're going to be in there soon, very soon. Right. Okay, well, thanks for doing that, Charles. Charles generally does the vast majority of testing. Uh, he's also the tube hound. He finds amazing tubes. Uh, he's much better at it than I am. So if you've stayed till the end, here's some discount codes to help you out. And we've been paying out quite a few of the code you could figure out if you spend a little bit more money, but we haven't yet paid out the big money. If you spend, if you spend the big bucks, there's a big code. <laughs> and nobody's guessed it yet. Uh, and quite a few people have spent that kind of money. And we got flat rate, flat rate shipping of $20 around the world. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on us, folks. Stay safe, everyone. Have fun. This is Jim. And Charles. Signing off. Cheers, everyone.